You know, there is a ton of myths out there in the bass fishing world. Well, I found a pretty interesting article on outdoor life that was written in July of this year. And I think I want to talk about nine of those today. So make sure you stay tuned. Hi there, welcome to the Bass Fishing Life. I'm your host, Steve Rogers. Before we get into the video, make sure that you hit the subscribe button and punch the notification bell. Share the video, drop a comment. Thank you so much. Well, I was scrolling through the internet the other day thinking about some different topics that we could share here in the group, and I ran across an interesting article in Outdoor Life Magazine. It was published in July of 2019, and the author was a man by the name of Pete Robbins. The exact title of the article goes like this, 11 Bass Fishing Myths That Are Keeping You From Landing a Trophy. I'll put the link to this article down in the description, so if you would like to read it, take a look at it, you can do so. I'm gonna go over nine of these particular myths today, and I'm going to state my opinion and answer them based on my own experience, what I've heard others say, but maybe you have different experiences. If so, go ahead and drop them down in the comments. Do you agree with this article? Yes or no? Myth number one, large bass eat the same things that smaller bass do. So what this particular article is saying is that large fish, trophy fish, tend to eat different things than the smaller fish do. Now let me go ahead and explain, because when I get to myth number two, you're gonna see how they kind of contradict each other a little bit. But basically what the article is explaining is that bass are creatures of habit, they have instincts. They want to make sure that whatever they eat is going to give them more calories and protein than the energy that they expend. Now they are not thinking about this in their head like we are when we're going to the grocery store or when we get up and go into the kitchen, but their instincts are telling them to survive. They've got to bring in more calories than they expend. Makes sense, right? So that kind of leads us to believe that the bigger baits, the bigger prey bait fish are things that trophy fish are going to key after. When a fish is smaller, it may key in on a thread fin shad, which is a small shad. But as that fish gets larger, maybe their prey of choice is going to change to a gizzard shad, which get a lot bigger, or maybe they're gonna start keying in on bluegills. That is what this myth number one is talking about. It is saying that you need to understand that trophy fish have a slightly different diet than maybe those smaller fish do. Myth number two says big baits catch big bass. You may be thinking well that totally contradicts what we said in myth number one. Well here's what the article goes on to state that yes the the bigger bait offerings can catch you the bigger fish but bass are opportunistic predators. So if they are sitting in their home spot, their home area, and a thread fin or a minnow just happens to come by and they do not have to extend much energy to go ahead and eat that thing, they're going to. Every year we hear about light line fishermen, finesse anglers, crappie anglers, panfish anglers that catch a true trophy and they may be using a little 16th ounce hair jig or something like that. So keep in mind, even though myth number one says those bass, those trophy bass want to get a meal that's worth their time and effort, they are the type of predator that's going to take advantage of, come, of what comes right by them. Myth number three says that bass cannot learn because they have a small brain. Well, we obviously know that their brain compared to the size of a human's is very small. But there has been a lot of studies done that look at whether or not bass condition to certain sounds or certain smells, colors, that type of stuff. And yes, bass can get accustomed to certain things. Now, whether that means that they understand the pain of a hook set on a certain color lure and they're going to try to avoid that lure in the future? I don't know. 
I have seen on a lot of the home lakes that I fish that lures that are very popular tend to not always catch the biggest fish. Okay, that doesn't mean they can't, but I think sometimes there are better offerings to catch that true trophy. You may be pulling in lots in two, two to three pounders, but a different lure may get that five, six, seven plus pounder if they've been conditioned to seeing the same things over and over and over. It kind of goes along with my belief that it's not a bad idea to try something different. Myth number four, that big bass move around randomly. This myth perpetuates because once in a while you'll be out on the lake and you'll just see a beast swimming shallow down the shoreline and to us it apparently looks like they have no agenda no place to go and they're just out for a nice sunday stroll well scientists tell us that these trophy fish like to find a certain home area home territory and call it theirs oftentimes these home areas are where many different types of structure and cover converge i like to think about it in the same terms of deer hunting deer follow ridges they have certain trails they follow if you walk through the whitetail woods it's very easy to see how those animals use the terrain and then they have a home base a home area that they feel comfortable with that gets them to food gets them to thick cover with the shortest distance travel okay bass are the same way they're going to find an area that gets them to good feeding areas gets them to thick cover and keeps them in a spot where they don't have to travel too terribly far so those big fish do have a home base now we may catch them on the fringe of their home base sometimes especially when the spawn comes about but they do like to maintain a certain area and i can say from personal experience that there are certain areas on lakes that i fish that tend to produce bigger and better fish there may not be a ton of fish right there but there'll be two or three that are of a much better quality than anywhere else and i can go back to those spots time and time again throughout the year and catch those better fish myth number five moon phase doesn't matter man when you talk about the phase of the moon you are going to have anglers all over the board as far as yes it matters doesn't matter yes it matters doesn't matter and the debate goes on and on and on well doug hannon the late doug hannon okay a lot of you probably have seen his lunar tables and stuff like this his his belief was that over the course of his fishing career it made a big difference and he was always referring to when the moon was directly overhead or underfoot. Now if you live near tidal areas you know it makes a big difference with those tides coming in or out. But the gravitational pull of the moon, whether it's above us or directly below us, does impact the microorganisms in the water pulls them up, pulls them down. It changes the position of the food chain without a doubt. I'm definitely a believer that the moon does make a difference. Now that does not mean that I set my calendar towards it. If I happen to be out when the moon is directly overhead or underfoot, that's great. But for those that totally disagree with that, and which is completely fine. I like to say, well, you know, why not put all the possible factors in your favor? I'm going to skip over myth number six in this article, it has to do with the spawn, and I'm gonna jump right to myth number seven. This myth says that bass stay in deep water all summer long. Now, we do know that a majority of fish especially larger fish are going to go to deeper water doesn't necessarily mean deep deeper water from what they were in the springtime or what they are in you know the late fall but if conditions are optimal those big fish will stay shallow let me give you a perfect example in river systems a lot of those trophy fish can be found in very shallow water the moving water keeps oxygen levels optimum 
there's usually a lot of good structure or cover whether that's rocks trees washed up log jams or even vegetation i fish the mississippi river a lot and i will say in the heat of the summer i've caught a lot of big fish in less than three feet of water doesn't mean i've caught fish deeper than that but depending on the ecosystem big fish do not always go really really deep in the summertime but conditions have to be optimal much like your own living room in your house if those conditions are optimal you've got your recliner the tv's amazing food's not too far away you're comfortable why would you leave myth number eight according to this article is that bass do not feed during cold fronts well, I think most of us can agree that the feeding is quite not as, it's not as ferocious or it's not as good of a bite, but fish still have to eat. These bass still have to consume calories. They may not feed as long and they may not have as ferocious of a bite, but they still have to feed, especially if you have prolonged cold fronts. One just keeps coming in one after the other. Those fish will feed at some point in time. They do not completely turn off. Myth number nine says scent doesn't matter. And it, this article even goes on to talk about that, you know, there are some old timers in the past that would soak their baits in gasoline and throw them out in the lake and still catch a fish to prove their point that scent does not matter. Well, here's my opinion on this. I was watching a video by Kevin Van Dam one time, and just like I mentioned earlier in the video, he said, why would you not put every possible advantage in your favor so even if you're not a hundred percent convinced whether or not scent works why not try it what if it does work what is it going to hurt now we mentioned earlier that bass can be conditioned to sense that is what scientists have figured out when they're studying bass but let's let's think about it this way if you've got some fast moving baits crank baits spinner baits jerk baits those types of things yeah I probably would agree that maybe scent isn't that mo isn't really all that important but what about when you've got a bait sitting there and a fish gets a good chance to look at it I'm thinking drop shots shaky head Texas rig maybe even if you're bed fishing during the spawn I would think that scent could help push that fish over the edge and want to bite whatever it is that you are offering. Myth number 10, according to this article, says that big bass do not bite during the middle of the day. Well, no one can argue with the fact that early morning and evening are optimal times to catch fish. Everybody can agree with that. But fish do feed all day, especially when they are presented the opportunity and they don't have to exert a ton of energy to get that food. Myself, personally, I've had many opportunities to fish all day long, especially because of competing in tournaments. And I can honestly say that my biggest fish have come in at like 10 a.m. to two o'clock stretch of time. Fish that I have weighed in for big bass, fish that have put me over the edge and, and get me past the cut line to get a check, they've usually come between 10 a.m. and 2 p.m. Now for me personally, I think that is because during that time of day, the fish position themselves more because of possible sunlight and it fits and suits more my style of fishing, but big fish definitely can be caught during the middle of the day. Well, those are the nine myths that we are going to go over based on Pete Robbins' article. What do you think? Do you agree? Do you disagree? Drop a comment down below. Hey, make sure that you get out and encourage someone today. You never know what a difference you're going to make in their life. For the Bass Fishing Life, I'm your host, Steve Rogers.